Come on, you can, you can ingest it. And eat that live bits. Hey, there it is. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are coming at you live from our studio in beautiful Surrey, British Columbia. <laughs> it's not funny because I've lied about us being in Surrey, British Columbia. It's funny because Surrey, British Columbia is kind of like the armpit of the Vancouver area. We're going to be building the sickest, cleanest AMD build, and it's sponsored by Seasonic. Seasonic is generally pretty chill about like the talking points. I actually have to tell you guys about their products. So all we've really done today to make this build Seasonic is use a couple of their products, starting with the Synchro Q7. This case is actually pretty sweet. So Seasonic came up with this idea of like, um, <sighs> Like, instead of having all the cables run from your power supply, whether it's in the basement or the top of the case, to all the individual components in like a big wire octopus, Seasonic came up with this idea that you could have... Oh, that's a shame. I got it. <sighs> this idea that you could have the power come from the power supply to somewhere a little bit closer to where all the cables need to break out to and achieve cleaner cable management. And their initial attempt at it tried to kind of create something that was generic enough to work with, you know, a lot of cases that were already on the market. And the problem with that is that when you're the jack of all trades, you tend to be the master of none. So for their second iteration, they actually created the Synchro Q7, which is a case designed specifically for your like power supply distribution module to go on the left side panel here. So let's go ahead and crack it open. It's got a four millimeter tempered glass side panel, which we're gonna, oh my God, how do I get it off? I'm sure there's a way to do it. Hello? Yeah, I just, I can't find any, oh right, there we go. <laughs> well, okay, look, it's in my defense, it's not that obvious that the, the front piece here, Okay, yeah, it's like, okay, it's not, it's not that obvious, okay? So tempered glass side panel coming off. Okay. Comes with four Seasonic branded Nidec fans. So Nidec, kind of a reputable fan manufacturer. Maybe not the you know, whole RGB sex appeal thing going on, but they're definitely quiet and should last for a long time. Look at this industrial looking AF right there. And of course, we're gonna have to fire up this. So this is the Synchro Connect, which is the power supply that like, has like a funky mount right here that we attach it to. And it looks a little something like this. So that is actually handling the 12 volt to 5.5 volt, uh, 3 volt and, or 5.5, excuse me, 5 volt and 3.3 volt conversions. So the power supply that goes in the bottom of the unit is actually 12 volt only. So you can see here, it's actually got um, RGB power as well as fan power. It's got your SATA and Molex over here. It's got uh, the power supply inputs right here. That's it. So 12 volt power goes from the power supply into these two. And then you've got your CPU connectors. And where the devil are the GPU connectors? Oh, that's right. There you go. So motherboard, I've got it upside down. Uh, motherboard 24 pin, and then your GPU 8 pin power connectors come out here. So they just run short little cables directly to your GPU. Pretty sweet, huh? And it doesn't even need any kind of active cooling or anything because that DC to DC conversion is very efficient. The most inefficient part of the uh, power conversion that your power supply does is from AC to DC. And what's cool about that, we actually did a video recently looking at the ATX 12VO standard from Intel. What's interesting is that by, whoops, only converting from 120 or 240 volt AC to 12 volt, and then using a DC to DC conversion for everything else, you actually can achieve significantly better efficiency in your system. Unfortunately, I don't actually know if this will translate uh, to a non 12 volt only motherboard because 
Just trying to think. Yeah, no, this is this is still the traditional way in terms of um, how the power is being actually delivered to the board. So in that case, you would have to go straight from the 12 volt only power supply into a board that's designed to take 12 volt only. And that's like, that's a whole really interesting thing. So those boards have like power outputs that come off of them for like your uh, for your hard drives and stuff like that. One of the things you'll notice about the power supply is it comes with these adorable little cables. That's because the cables don't have to be long in order to reach the parts. Let's talk about what kind of system we're building in it, though, before we start integrating the power supply. I feel like I'm doing this. It's throwing me off. I'm doing this whole build completely out of order. I've taken completely random cables out of the box. So the system is pure unobtainium. We're going with a Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core processor. This puppy runs at a 3.7 gigahertz base clock. It's uh, <clears throat> Got an MSRP of, uh, what is it, Seven fifty nine. dollars What's the street price on this one, Colin? A billion dollars. A billion dollars, if you could even get one. Truthfully, I, I see a lot of people posting on social media, like, being really angry. Like, what's up with all these influencers having all these processors that I can't even get? Do you know how many of these we have? One. We have one. We use them over and over again, you guys. We don't just like, every time we build a computer, we're not just like, you know, pulling CPUs out of our, out of our pants. LTTstore.com, by the way. Like, it's, it, <laughs> we've got one. We tear the build down, and then we, see, look. Look how dirty this heat spreader is. We have to kind of, we have to kind of shine them up for the videos so they look new. It's all a lie. It's all movie magic. <laughs> anyway. We've got some 3200 megahertz ballistics memory. These are CL16 modules, so pretty good bang for the buck memory modules. We've gone with a really reasonable motherboard. I actually love the B550 chipset. It's everything you need and nothing that you don't need. This particular board has a 14 plus two phase power delivery system. It supports Crossfire if you were sort of crazy enough and lucky enough to actually get your hands on two graphics cards. It's got two NVMe M.2 slots, one of which is PCI Express Gen 4, and it has PCI Express Gen 4 support for the top PCI Express 16X slot, which we'll be populating with an RX 6800 XT. Street price, uh, what's my street price on that one? $650, and what's my, or sorry, that's my MSRP price. What's my street price on that one? About $900. About $900. Lordy. <laughs> Not that bad. It's not even like, it's not even flagship tier. Drives me crazy, David. It drives me crazy. You know, you know it, even if I didn't need a computer right now, you know, even if I didn't need any of these components for the business that we conduct, it still drives me absolutely crazy because it makes it impossible for us to give accurate information in our videos unless we actually shot the video and then released it like exact same day. We can't give you guys accurate information for how much anything costs. And when you don't know how much anything costs, you have no idea if it's a good value proposition or not. So when we try to do something like, um, I think a perfect example was the holiday buyer's guide. The prices were changing so often that in between conceptualizing the video and writing it, prices changed. In between writing it and reviewing the plan for the video with me, with the writer, prices changed. In between that and shooting it, prices changed. And in between shooting it and editing it, prices changed. And then between editing it and releasing it, prices changed. So it was like, well, <laughs> we did our best. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get the motherboard opened up here, shall we? Ah, uh, uh, yes, Wi-Fi. So you pay about an extra 20 bucks for the Wi-Fi version of this motherboard, if I recall correctly. It's one of those things where, like, man, it's tough. It depends on the budget for me, because it's easy to kind of say, oh, well, by the time you're spending, you know, $1,000, $2,000 on a system, what's 20 bucks for Wi-Fi? But if it's the kind of thing that you will absolutely never use and you're 100% sure you'll never use it, then it's pretty much $20 on nothing. The problem for me is that Wi-Fi, while it's not something that I use every day, is one of those things where like that one time that I need it, it is so handy and so irreplaceable that I, I, do, tend to, I do tend to like to have it. Um, 
Like I had an issue a little while ago where a firmware update was causing a packet loss in my home network on my switch. And the only way that I was able to troubleshoot it, because I didn't have another network switch handy, was by just connecting to Wi-Fi. And I was like, okay, if Wi-Fi has no packet loss and wired does, then uh, you know, we, got, we got a problem. We got a problem on this network here. So it's, it's handy to have as like kind of a troubleshooting tool, but I also understand why people don't want to blow money on it. Let me just see if there's uh... we had some we actually got some hate from one of my writers who was walking past while we were while we were starting up the stream. Uh, he was saying, "What? what? you didn't go X570 but Honestly, I just think B550 is so much more of a sensible choice. The only things you get with X570 from like a, a general consumer standpoint that you would care about is you do tend to get better I.O. Like this is not great. Yes, my friends, the year is 2021 and that is USB 2, okay? You've got a couple USB 3 10 gigs. You've got another USB 3 10 gig that's a type C. Oh, that's cool. This one's got that uh, audio type C. So this is just like, uh, if I recall correctly, it's like a filtered, like power filtered USB port so that it'll be, you know, cleaner for your external DAC or whatever the case may be. So you do kind of compromise in terms of your rear I.O. But the only other big difference from my point of view for a general consumer is that you only get limited support for PCI Express Gen 4. So you get PCI Express Gen 4 on this top 16x slot and PCI Express Gen 4 on probably this M.2 based on that this one is down here. Um, so the link between the CPU and the chipset is Gen 3 instead of Gen 4. So anything running off of the chipset is running at Gen 3 speeds. There are so few expansion cards though, especially now, that actually benefit from PCI Express Gen 4 that I don't see it as a significant problem. Where the hell did that iFixit kit go? It was here moments ago. Right in front of me? <laughs> oh boy. All right, well look, in my defense, I was trying to say somewhat coherent things while also <laughs> looking for my screwdriver. Um, yeah, so consumers already have so few PCI Express devices that they plug in, and almost none of them are super bandwidth heavy. I mean, that might change over the next five to eight years. You know, maybe we're going to get uh, consumer grade 8K displays and consumer grade 8K capture cards, for example, so that you can stream on, you know, Twitch or YouTube when they finally increase their uh, their their bit rates, if that's ever going to happen. I have heard rumblings of it happening, but there's been no solid movement in that direction so far. Uh, but for now, it's just not worth it uh, from my point of view. Um, Colin's pointing out that this particular board, two times PCI. Ah, uh, yes, no, I see what you mean, Colin. So uh, a point of clarification. When I said that it only supports one PCI Express Gen 4 16X slot, um, I should have clarified that it can also support this slot being bifurcated, so split into 8x and 8x with this one down here. So technically, if you did want to have two PCI Express Gen 4 expansion cards, you could install them, but your graphics card, let's say your graphics card's PCI Express Gen 4 and you've got it in the top slot here, that card would only run at PCI Express Gen 3 16x speed. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a little bit of math here for you guys. PCI Express Gen 4 is double the bandwidth per lane. But if you take this 16x lane and make it an 8x and an 8x, then you're going back to half the total bandwidth because you've only got eight lanes of Gen 4, which is about the same as 16 lan lanes of Gen 3. So yes, you do have two 16x Gen 4 slots on here. But the 16xness of them is only to maintain physical compatibility with the cards. That's not because, see, look, you can actually see in the slot here, only half of these pins are even in here. It's just so that you can fit the card in. One of the coolest things about PCI Express is the fact that intergenerationally and inter sort of bandwidth -ness -ness I actually, <laughs> regardless of how many lanes the slot or the card supports, theoretically, 
it's all intercompatible. So if I had a 16x card and I just like dremeled out the back of this 1x slot, I could put it in there. It just would be limited in terms of its performance. And then vice versa, if I had a 16x slot and I just plunk a 1x card in there, that'll work fine, just fine. All right, let's talk about our uh, storage. So uh, we threw a Corsair MP600 Gen 4 PCI Express SSD in here. Uh, there's nothing actually installed on that, and the main point of having it in here was just to illustrate that this particular slot is a Gen 4 slot. So you could throw a 980 Pro in there, you could throw one of uh, Sabrent's new PCI Express Gen 4 drives in there and get like you know 7 gigabytes, nearly 8 gigabytes a second of read performance off the thing if you really want to. Uh, we won't have, be able to install this anymore, but that's okay. And then, the one that I actually have anything installed on is this Crucial P2, so this is a two terabyte drive. I'm gonna just chuck this down in the bottom slot. This is the one I'll actually be booting off of. There's just no point putting it in the primary slot because this is a Gen 3 drive. It's Colin's test bench drive. So for these live streams, again, we're not even trying to maintain the facade of, you know, yeah, this is like a computer I'm building that will stay built forever. Um, <laughs> it will be taken apart <laughs> at some point later. Probably today, yeah. Oh, oh, but still, you know, while we're running it, we want to do a good job of keeping it cool, right? There we go. David, I always keep it cool. What is that? What is that little snicker there? <laughs> he didn't. He didn't even snicker until I called him on the the snicker that he didn't snicker, that he didn't snuck. Yeah, I knew you were thinking it. <laughs> All right. So our board is, ah, no, not quite kitted out. Let's go ahead and do our memory installation. I'm never gonna forget that time on a live stream that I accidentally installed RAM in the wrong slot. So that's not happening today. Uh, our RAM slots will be separated by one and they will be the ones farther from the CPU socket, which is generally, without checking the manual, the safe bet. And I had done it the other way that other time. Now in terms of cooler, oh, we, oh, we do have a cooler today. Oh, nice, okay. Wow, we've actually gone full bore on our cooler. This is somewhere that I think you could probably get away with saving a buck. I'm a big fan of the NHU-12S, um, but today we're going NHD-15 because screw it, why not? You just kind of can't go wrong with an Octo CPU cooler. Really high quality fans, they last for a really, really long time. They've got black versions of them now, which is absolutely freaking sick. They've got a great mounting mechanism that works awesome on every socket. So they're one of the few kind of heavy tower coolers that, um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend shipping your system with one of these attached to it. Like this is just a lot of weight and copper can only be so strong. But if you were to do that, they're one of the few mounting mechanisms where I would have confidence that even if your heatsink is like bent to hell from the box being dropped and it just being like it wouldn't tear off the motherboard because I have seen that. I have seen things, guys. Like people were talking about, you know, Linus sounds like he's got post-traumatic stress disorder, talking about some of the shipping things he's seen at NCIX. But, and I think, Colin, at the time, you doubted me, didn't you? I did, that. You doubted me. And then Creeper. the Creeper PC in spite of crating it, still managed to get destroyed in shipping. That was ex exactly what I was talking about. It's like, it doesn't seem possible, you know? It just doesn't seem possible that anyone could be so careless. And yet, and yet it happens. Now to be clear, I'm not saying that every postal worker is like a careless person that wants to destroy your parcel. I don't think that's true at all. Uh, in fact, the carriers that we deal with here locally are by and large fantastic. We get very little shipping damage. I'm just saying that a lot of people touch every package, if you know what I'm saying, and it only takes one bad apple to, you know, bruise it, if you know what I'm saying. And once it's bruised, everyone after there can be so gentle and so, so delicate and careful, but the damage is done, you know, and it just it hurts it even more, no matter how gentle you are, if you know what I'm saying. So let's go ahead and grab some, uh, grab some AM4 mounting brackets here. 
I really like that AMD still believes that you should just have like decent mounting hardware included by default with your motherboards. Occasionally, motherboard manufacturers will cheap out and they won't put this metal plate on the back and they'll just have the plastic clips on the front um, and then the holes will just be there and there'll be like kind of plastic going through the holes. But most motherboard manufacturers do this and it's awesome because it means that it is basically impossible for that heat sink to come off. It is screwed into a gigantic steel backplate uh, with like fiberglass and copper in between it. Like it, it, it cannot come apart. Well, I shouldn't say cannot come apart. We did have the, uh, we did have that PC that went through a fire. Um, that was pretty bad. Hey, did we ever, did we ever hear back? They, they got the, they got the computer, right? Yeah, we got the computer and it's running. It's having some stability issues, but that's not helping through. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Colin. So here, I'll, I'll just show you guys how it installs here. So you just grab your, your AMD spacers, throw your, I'm trying to remember, is it this way? I think it's this way. I could check the manual, but I mean, come on. That's not a tech tip, that's like a tech, that's a tech show of weakness. Exactly, it's totally cheating. You know what, I should actually make sure that the gray ones are the right ones. I'm pretty sure it is. You know what, no, I'm sure. I'm sure the gray ones are AM4, and then the white ones are if you have an older AM3 or AM2 or 2 plus or whatever. Man, do you remember when AMD had all those like really confusing sockets? AM2, AM2 plus, AM3, and then like the CPUs were forward and backward compatible, but then the motherboards were not. They are in so much of a better place these days. I just absolutely freaking love it. All right, there we go. So we screw those in. Now we've got the, the SecuFirm posts here, and the heatsink can go onto that. I'm not even going to bother putting the second fan on because for a 5900X, it's like entirely unnecessary. Hi, can I help Hi. you? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. You need to hold on a second, though. Six feet. I will mask up. Okay, fine. You can, you can play with that now. <laughs> Sorry, my wireless pack is apparently causing problems for us. All right, let's go ahead and get the heatsink. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You see how close that was? This is how you make careless mistakes when you're live streaming. This is exactly, this, this is how you get ants. You don't put enough thermal paste on your, on your heatsink. The ants get in there, they love to eat up that lack of thermal paste. That's their sugar. They don't like real sugar. <laughs> All right. Here you go, little 5900X. Your 20th thermal paste application in your short, short life. <laughs> this one's been used for quite a bit of GPU testing as well, so it's really been around the block. All right, let's throw this on here. Oh, I guess I should probably look at chat at some point or another. I'm just getting all these boxes kind of piled up here. Hey, Colin, if I put these boxes over here, um, do you want to kind of throw them back together or something at some point? There we go. I'm going to keep all the motherboard stuff together, though. There you are, good sir. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Thank you. All right, chat, how you guys doing? You guys having a wonderful Thursday? Because I really hope so. Thursday? What? No, I don't got to spread the paste, Softworks BC. You don't spread paste. OK, you know what? Fine. We're going we're gonna to prove it today. We're going to prove it. We're going to prove that I don't need to spread the paste. OK, so I'm going to take this fan off here. There we go. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to grab my trusty screwdriver. You know what? This was really nice. Uh, a viewer actually sent me a new one of my orange screwdriver because they noticed that I hadn't been using it lately. And you know what happened is the ratchet actually broke on it. It finally failed after all these years. I had owned that screwdriver for about 18 years and I was not its first owner, actually. Um, so the ratchet finally failed and while Snap-on does have a lifetime warranty, apparently, I have no idea how to claim it. I think you're supposed to like take it to their truck or something. And I don't work at a mechanic shop, so like the Snap-on truck doesn't exactly come by all the time. And besides, it kind of had a lot of sentimental value for me, so I just decided to retire it. Um, so now I have a brand new one. So thank you for that. 
I might not end up using it for that long, if you catch my drift, but I'm using it now, and thank you very much. Okay, so I'm approved now why I don't have to spread the thermal paste. You guys ready? Here we go. Should I be looking at? Uh, I'm, I don't know, nothing for now. You can switch to the overhead and give David's arms a break if you want, Chase. They can watch this, they can watch this pop out. You're such a trooper, David. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your dedication to bringing this live stream to the 30,000 people that are watching it right now. What's up, 30,000 people? So what's up, people? <laughs> I really can't do that convincingly, can I? No one can. The whole, like, anything that requires a low voice, you know, I, I just, it's bad. But you can go It's really bad. I, I embrace it. I just feel like, uh, I feel like whenever I try to do anything kind of low voicey, uh, so do you remember grade eight? Okay. I, hate I mean, I, it. I, I, okay, I know, I know. Nobody wants to remember grade eight. <laughs> but do you remember grade eight when everybody would walk around the halls like this, like, hey, what's up, guys? You know, like pretending to have a low voice, like their voice changed, but actually it didn't. You know we can tell, right, kids? Kids, you know we can tell, right? You're not <laughs> fooling anyone. Why do you do it? It's like, just, just embrace that you haven't hit puberty yet. All right, so here you go. Here's my magic trick. Look at this. Boom, the paste is spread. Look at that. Can you even believe it, ladies and gentlemen? That paste is spread. It's like professional grade. Professional grade. And watch this. I'm going to show you another secret trick. I'm going to reuse it. <gasps> Wait, what? You mean if no like contaminants get in it, then it's still the same paste as when I put it in there? No, sh shut up. Impossible. Voodoo. It's got some voodoo magic in this computer. Also known as, you know, RDNA2. That, that GPU technology. It's like, you know, RDNA2. It kind of is like sort of magical, right, if you think about it. RDNA2 is AMD's alleged new graphics architecture, but like no one's ever seen it in person. So how do you know it's all not just fake? David, RDNA2, can you buy one? I mean, if you buy a console, yeah. Uh, okay. I have, I have a console. All right, that, all right, that's fair. Fine, the, fine, 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 fine. The PC version, PC version of RDNA2, right. the real version. I've never seen it in the wild outside of this office. That, see, that's what I'm talking about. Have you ever seen it on a store shelf? Nope. Nope. Ever, do you have any friends that have an RDNA2 graphics card? Certainly not. What, we're not friends? <laughs> you don't own one. I totally, totally, totally walked him into that trap. Damn. Yeah, you know what? You know, even this, this is just a picture, right? Is there actually RDNA2 in here? That, look, it's another picture. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> second picture. What about second picture? Uh, all right. <laughs> I just rewatched them because of the new the new 4K whatever H Jeffrey. You know, I was reading an article that they were like, yeah, the like 4K, the HDR like new color whatever totally ruined the aesthetic. Yeah, right. Like what? No. What are you even talking about? That is literally that is quite literally the definition of viewing something through nostalgia glasses. <laughs> literally yeah. of a filter on the experience you had 20 years ago that is making it so that you can't appreciate something new. That is literally what you did. It's better. It's definitely better. 100%. And I'm sorry that you have like a uh, crappy TV and we're not able to properly appreciate it. Look, <laughs> that's, that's the only reason I can think of why someone would be mad, okay? Maybe they bought into the 4K hype too early and their 4K TV doesn't have HDR, but they spent a bunch of money on it because they were like, yeah, 4K, it's gonna be like the, sh the shiz. It's gonna be awesome. And then it like wasn't awesome until HDR is what really changed the visual appeal of, of films on it. And they're like mad now. That's the only explanation I can think of. They dismissed the green dream filter on everything. Man, it really is, oh yeah, it was not great. It really is rough to be an early adopter, isn't it? Yeah. Like, if you think about it, you get the worst of all worlds. Yeah. You pay the most, it's buggiest, you get fewer experiences, and by the time it's actually good, 
that investment you made that the like sales rep at the local you know big box store or whatever talked you into or that you talked yourself into because you just couldn't resist the shiny is terrible like you could easily have spent six seven eight ten thousand dollars on a 4k tv like four years ago and be having a way worse experience overall than someone who spent like two grand on a 1080p tv uh you know four years ago and spend another two grand today. You can get crazy TVs for like two grand right now. It's absolutely nuts. I mean, it's like, isn't tech funny? You can't buy a graphics card at a reasonable price to save your life. Like this tiny, this tiny little thing, they can't make enough of it because there's two companies in the world that can manufacture the silicon that goes in here to a degree of quality that's high enough to make a product like this. You got TSMC and you got Samsung. That's, that's it. And meanwhile, Apple, to my, to my knowledge, booked, I think it was 80% of TSMC's five nanometer capacity for like the entirety of this year or something like that. I can't, I can't remember the exact details, but like basically if your name is not Tim Cook, you are not buying five nanometer processors right now. Um, and then when it comes to like TVs, which are like these gigantic and like, come on guys, super complex. Like a TV is, if you showed a, t a, a modern flat screen TV, okay, to someone from even 25 years ago, they would think it was freaking magic. They'd be like, no way. Where's the cathode ray tube? Like, what is going on? 25 years ago, that was 1995. Have you seen the monitor that John Carmack was using in like 1995? Have you seen, have oh, you yeah. seen this, David? The, wi the widescreen CRT that's like this deep on his desk. Like, it, it is no wonder that everyone had like terrible posture back then. Because if you think about it, desks haven't gotten any like narrower or deeper, really. Think about it. They haven't really changed. So all that's really changed is that you are able to sit a comfortable distance from your monitor now. Yeah, 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 here, here, check this out. Look at this thing, look at this monstrosity. Is that, that's not the widescreen one though, is it? No, that's, 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 that's the widescreen. I can't remember, is that, I thought he had a widescreen one. Probably a little bit later. I could have sworn he did. Well, there's one there, that's widescreen in the, Uh, oh, no. No, not that one. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It, it, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. So he, he had a couple of, of couple of legendary monitors over the years. Um, but yeah, 1995. You, you showed someone something like that, they'd be like, what? It's amazing. And they're so, they're so freaking cheap. I love it. Okay. So we've got our whole platform built up here. Let me just have a look if uh, float plane chat say anything. Speed cap on MOBOs. What are you talking about? Tricky says, I love my shares in TSMC right now. TSMC, man, they're just like, there is no competition. Like there's, there's no competition. Like Samsung is the closest thing they have to a competitor. And oh, you, you know, you look at, <clears throat> you look at what Nvidia's GPUs are like. The early news about the RTX 30 series mobile GPUs is not looking that amazing because the power efficiency just isn't there compared to what TSMC is doing. And it's kind of, it's kind of been that way for, for, a hot, for a hot minute here, but it's just like, I understand why Nvidia did it. It's not like their product's not competitive with what AMD has. And if Samsung has the capacity, I mean, you can, at least you can like sort of buy a 30 series. I don't think I've seen this in stock like at all. Um, all right, let's talk about getting the Synchro set up. Of course, Seasonic is our sponsor for the stream today, so we need to make sure that we get them some, ah, yes, here we go. This is the box I was looking for. Uh, get their products featured, and this is actually really cool. We did a short circuit video about this case a little while back, but I didn't do a full proper build in it, so that's the big difference today. Uh, I love it when cases come with one of these nice little screw organizers but it's a bit of a downer when uh, the screws are not all pre-separated for me. That's okay. To my knowledge, this is Seasonic's first crack 
at making a case, at least in sort of their, their, modern, their modern history. So I can definitely forgive a couple of small wrinkles, especially because overall it's a really good first effort. So we're going to go ahead and take our distribution kind of uh, get, get out of here. <laughs> take our distribution uh, block piece here. So this is where 12 volt power goes in and everything else comes out. And we're going to screw it into right here. Now you can see it does need a little bit of ventilation. That's why the case actually comes with a, like a, a vent in the side panel. So you can have a little bit of airflow kind of passively sort of radiating through this. I shouldn't say passively radiating, passively convecting? Con what, what, would be the, what would be the convection? Yeah, I know, but like you would say that, so if you're talking about you know, a radiation method of heat transfer, you would say radiating. What's the, con what's the convecting. convecting? That's a word? Okay, well, if it's not, my apologies, you know, physics nerds. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if you understand what I'm talking about, then that's the point of language anyway, so I'm not gonna stress too much about these small details. It's a thing, convecting is a thing? Oh, beautiful. Okay, so convecting. All right, we got six screws here. Oh, I guess now's a good time to uh, chat with the chat. Uh, rips, Rippin6, whatever that says. I switched from uh, YouTube to Floatplane, and it both looks and sounds noticeably better and not barely. Yeah, YouTube's live is not great. Honestly, if, there's, if there was something that I could ask YouTube to fix about their platform, uh, better, better live quality would be, would be one of those things because they're one of the only companies that has the, the engineering and has the, the data center grunt to do it. And it would just be such a boon for consumers, really, if they could just have better, better quality live content, man. Like, and even if they couldn't do better live, I still think there's things that they could do to really elevate the experience of live. Um, shoot, I put this on upside down. Dang it. That's what happens when you build computers live. Wait, no, I didn't. This is not upside down. What did, so what did I do? Why is it not going in there? Um, one of the things that they could do is they could make the archive available at like a higher bit rate. Like if you could, if they could ingest at a higher bit rate, like, you know, even 20 megabit or something like that. And then they could rebroadcast, because they have to transcode it anyway. So if they rebroadcast at, you know, six megabit or what we're kind of kind of what we're stuck with today, but then kept the original ingest so at least the VOD of the live stream was available at higher quality, that would make such a big difference to the user experience. Because the vast majority of people who watch this video are gonna watch it later. They're not gonna watch it right now live. Big shout out, by the way, to those of you who are watching live. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate you guys. Maybe Microsoft should make a streaming platform. Yeah, yeah. If Microsoft made a streaming platform, it would be better. It would fix all the problems with like Amazon and, uh, and Google's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mix. Chase has got some good feedback. They need a mix of features from all the other good ones. Oh man! I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to disrespect Microsoft, but I just, you know, if it failed, I think it would put a real shroud over their, you know, their their company's history. I think they could be sneaky about it. Yeah, like a ninja. Oh man, that whole that whole thing, like, is that basically, is that whole thing with? Prominent streamers getting like these massive exclusivity deals basically dead. Did Dr. Disrespect end up getting another deal on another platform? Or is, he's just on YouTube now, I think, right? And then I don't think we ever got any sort of insider info on you know, what the deal was when Shroud returned to Twitch. So it seems like it's just all gonna remain in, huh, I wanted to say shrouded in mystery, but I had just made it like a Shroud pun, so I'm not gonna do it again. Seems like it's gonna remain mysterious forever. I don't understand what just happened. I had six of these screws all lined up, ready to go into this thing, but it looks like it only takes five. So there you go. This is it. That's the synchro distribution kind of, I don't know what to call it, plate, hub. Um, so all your fans, 
all your other components plug into this. So here, let's do, uh, let's do a quick demo of how it works. Let's plug in our motherboard. Um, you, can switch to the, you can switch to the overhead here if you want. I, God, man, I wish I, okay, next time for this stream, I want to have a better view of my overhead so that I have some idea what the, what the viewers are looking at. That's one thing we can tweak. We're always trying to make things better for you guys. It's basically the mouse pad, but a little bit bigger. The mouse pad, but a bit bigger? Yeah. Oh, okay, so I did get it in approximately the right spot. Because I, I was just guessing when I put it over here. <laughs> we try. We try hard here. All right, so let's get this fan cable out of the way. This is one of the reasons I love having the heat sink mounted to the motherboard while I'm uh, putting it in, because it's like you can just kind of hold it by the heat sink. That's another reason I like having a really, uh, <clears throat> a really robust mounting mechanism for my heat sink, because I tend to handle the entire board by it. How many screws should we put into the motherboard, David? 69. 69? Very funny. Ha 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 ha. I'm gonna put in four. Oh, uh, well. Oh shoot. That's weird. This one's the same threading as what I'm holding, but it's got a different head on it. Now I can skip screws, but I don't think my OCD can handle that. <laughs> nope. Off you go. We're gonna do all round-headed ones instead of hex-headed ones. Um, I don't know. I will collect every LTX emoji for all time. Oh man, have we basically have we basically finalized that LTX twenty twenty one is not happening? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've had to find other things for Chase to do um, because LTX twenty twenty one is probably not happening. The good idea, or the, <clears throat> the good news, is that, hey, Chase is still employed because we came up with the idea of ripping off game shows and making them tech-themed. So uh, you can <laughs> definitely look forward to that in the coming months. It actually should be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Tech Bachelor. Tech Bachelor. Yeah, yeah. What would you give this Ooh. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. You get like what, like V bucks instead of roses, yeah. like <laughs> gaming bachelor. Uh, gee. All right. Are we going to talk about the new Samsung phone? Asks Arthur Mint. Ah, uh, yes, we are. So we have an S twenty one on route. Uh, I have not gotten hands on with it yet, and unfortunately, I did not tune into Unpacked, so I'm going to have to check that out later. <laughs> I was prepping for this stream, and uh, what else was I doing? Oh, I finally chatted with, um, with the folks at If This Then That about my negative experience with my garage door opener. So I bought a garage door opener. Well, OK, what I really bought was a smart Wi-Fi relay switch. Um, it was a quad channel one from. Uh, who was it? I, I don't remember. I have a Sonoff one now, but it was like some other, some other one. Um, and I was really upset because one day it just like stopped working. And so I blamed the manufacturer for it not working anymore. Was it Sonoff? Uh, I can't remember actually. You know what? It doesn't matter. The point is I blamed the manufacturer for it not working. And they were like, hey, that's not fair because what really happened is if this then that, changed their policies so that um, we can't give you that integration for free anymore because now it like costs a bunch of money. And so I was like, oh, okay, well then now I know who to be mad at. Thanks for nothing, if this then that. And they basically reached out and were like, well, hey, we'd like a chance to, we'd like a chance to tell our side of the story here. And I was like, that seems reasonable enough. So the long and short of it is, they have to charge some money for the pro level of their service. And the reason that I needed pro was because you're allowed to create three of your own applets. So that's like three if this then that relationships with the basic version. But for simplicity's sake, um, I had it set up so that my garage door had open one door, close one door, 
open one other door, close one other door, open both doors, and close both doors, which is technically six of my own custom created applets. And that's apparently a professional feature now. Um, so it just one day stopped working. Now in their defense, and from my call with them, uh, they, they were like, yeah, this is kind of probably at least partially on you. Um, in their defense, they apparently did send out a lot of communication about the transition ahead of time, but I don't know about you guys, but I don't check a lot of the like random emails that come to me from, you know, Internet of Things providers that I use. Like, for the most part, I'm either looking for a solution to a problem or I don't really want to hear from you. And did I manage to pick this up upside down? I did, but you know what? I actually love this. This is kind of genius. Look how much easier it's going to be to work on the power supply here. See? Yeah. I'm getting like a, like kind of an old fashioned, yeah, throwback vibe here. Wait. Oh, pull it back. Huh. You know, for how close this is to fitting, you'd think they would just shave the like millimeter off that it would take to get that in there. Like, look at this. Look at this, David. Just make the case like one millimeter higher and I'd be able to slide it in from the side. It would probably actually save them some cost too, depending. I mean, there's, there's so many factors when it comes to making a case designed like this cost effective. Like it can even just be like, you know, what's the, what's the standard size of like sheets of steel and like so that it can be cut m most efficiently so you have as little wastage as possible. So maybe, you know, making every case one millimeter taller would have made it so that they would have wasted like a big hunk of steel at the edge of the sheet like this instead of like, you know, this or something. You never know. There's almost always a method to that type of madness. It's what, it's what I've learned over the years working in this in industry. You know, you go like, oh, you know, why is this screw like ever so marginally shorter than that one? It's like, oh, well, you know, because it saves, you know, four cents uh, per unit. And when you sell a million units a year, that's like 40 grand. It's like, okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, so right, back to my conversation with if this and that. Uh, in a nutshell, it was basically like, as much fun as it is to run a startup that's losing money forever, we had to make money eventually. So um, Pro allows our developers the resources that they need to continue to create uh, new, new tools um, for the users that want them. And if we, if we lose a couple to things like Home Assistant along the way, then you know, that's the price we have to pay to overall advance the, advance the ecosystem and continue doing what is our mission statement, which is like making smart home things that won't necessarily work together, all work together. And I was like, okay, fair enough. I mean, it doesn't make me any more irritated that my stuff that I bought because it did a certain thing stopped doing that thing through no action of my own. But I get it. I mean, it was a matter of time before I was going to have to set up like my own thing for that anyway. Like, uh, you know, this is a this is a story that almost definitely will get a little bit awkward. Um, you know, when when a man loves a woman, um, you know, sometimes you know, in their own home when their kids are away, it doesn't always happen in the bedroom, and. While I don't have a security camera in my bedroom, I do have security cameras in other parts of my house. And I was just, you know, thinking the other day how happy I am that my security system doesn't synchronize with the cloud in any way, if you kind of catch my drift, you know? And so pretty much everything that I can at this point in my life, I am trying to have not be uh, uploaded to a cloud server that I don't control. Now, there are a lot of things where it's just not practical. Uh, we use Google Docs, we use Microsoft Teams, we use Office 365, we use all kinds of cloud services for work, and I use a lot of cloud services personally as well. But not for things of that type of personal nature, you know? You know what I'm kind of getting at? I mean, I haven't been very vague here, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> Okay, apparently I completely ruined the chat. Oh, and I haven't even told you guys about uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing here synchro-wise. So check this out. Normally, you would have all this like 
space taken up by your mess of cables or like you would just need the space in order to plug in your modular power supply. But look how short this power supply is. That's because it's only doing a 120 or 240 volt AC to 12 volt DC conversion. All of these lines are 12 volt and then the 12 volt to 5 volt and 3.3 volt is all happening in here and then it'll be distributed more directly to the parts that need it. So actually, if Seasonic wasn't trying to maintain compatibility for their legacy products as well as other manufacturers' ATX products, they could have easily just had like another hard drive cage here or something like that. In fact, I think I see mounting for it. Yeah, you can totally put another hard drive cage here. So it's just a more efficient layout actually because this is all space that would normally just be taken up by like cable management. So they made the whole thing super flat, which I think is really cool. <clears throat> now let's show how it works over on the other end. Let's flip this back over. Uh-oh, oh no, what just happened? Oh, okay. Just a cable. Uh, oh, okay. I also dropped some of the little port savers that were up here. So I'm going to put my rubbers back in, back in here. There's one rubber. Ah, ah, ah. Two rubbers. Ah, ah, ah. I don't actually recommend the two rubber method. Um, it's, it's less effective than one, believe it or not. I think on a roll today. Uh, well, look, look. I just don't want to mislead the children, okay? because children shouldn't be having children, okay? Just want them to know. It's about education, David. This is not just dirty jokes. It's partially dirty jokes. <laughs> All right, so let's show how this works. So my 24 pin power connector for the motherboard. So that's got 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, minus 12, I think some minus 12 here, whatever. Point is, plugs in there. Little adorable connector, it goes right over there. Oh, well, it's going to try and go right over there. Fortunately, the industry is like mostly pretty standard in terms of <clears throat> uh, where the connectors go on. Oh, well, now it goes in. Okay, where the connectors go on components. So with, uh, you know, a margin of error of kind of like from there to there, they know that this cable doesn't have to be very long. You can see this just motherboard we picked up off the street plugs right into it, just like that. Isn't that cool? All right, now let's do the 8-pin CPU power connector. Here it is. So this one is, uh, uh, where does it go? Uh, that's GPU. Oh, this is an inverted layout case. I didn't even notice until now. So the motherboard is like upside down, so it puts the GPUs up at the top. So that means our 8-pin connector is going to go here. I really wish I had plugged this into the motherboard ahead of time. Uh, uh, Okay, this is going to have to... Chase, give me the overhead. Hold on a second. I got to... Uh, got to climb up on the table and get them up. Uh, really good look at that beanie, LTTstore.com. <laughs> no, I got this. I got this. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Professional PC builder right here. Look at me, I'm a professional. You can't stop this. He's unstoppable, ladies and gentlemen. Unstoppable. Ah, there you go. Ah. Man, one of these days, my knees are gonna go and I'm not gonna be able to, I'm not gonna be able to crouch like that. All right, so cool, check this out. Cable management for that boy goes right there like that. Almost no excess, and then they've got these little cable management strap-down doodads right here and here. So you just go like that, boom, clean. Like, is that clean or what? I actually love this. This is a concept that I pitched to Seasonic at kind of an awkward time. I was like, yeah, we should do a build where, like, you know, it's all, like, kind of, like, hardline power connections. And they were like, hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I can't tell you anything about what we're working on, but uh, see you later. <laughs> and then I think it was like six months later or something like that. They're like, yeah, it's not quite what you, what you asked for, but here's this concept we're working on where you have like the, a power distribution thing. So you just have overall less wiring. And I was like, oh, that's actually like, it's almost like real engineers came up with that idea. It's like better than my idea, uh, more practical anyway. I still think my idea would look super cool. Like, think about it. Individually run, like hardline power 
runs to everything, and then you just like clear coat them to, to insulate them so you don't accidentally you know, short them or whatever. That would be so cool. Um, what, else are, what else are we waiting on? What have I not, what have I not built yet? Jeep, is that it? Like hard, now that, oh no, front panel connectors, guys, come on. Now that hard drives aren't a thing though, you can build a computer so fast. It's crazy. Also, the front fans aren't connected, so let's get that sorted out. Uh, I'm not actually gonna plug into the synchro for the fans. I'm just gonna run these, um, let's say, let's say up here. Yeah, let's go right here. There's chassis fan, chassis fan header. Uh, Seasonic kindly includes a three to one adapter for this. So you just run that there and the whole front of it is ugh, immediately plugged in. These, uh, what are they, Nidec, I think they were? They're Nidec, yeah, these Nidec fans don't have the nicest, most cable management friendly wires on them, but it's one of those things where I can't fault the quality of it, so it's kind of like how we forgave Noctua for having brown fans for all those years, like, fine, whatever, but like, maybe you could work on it at some point, guys. They do mostly OEM work, so the odds are that you have a Nidec fan in your home even if you don't know about it. Uh, let's go ahead and run, this is probably front panel audio. Okay. Oh, it is so much easier to build a computer like just by myself. Sometimes I just do it just to, just to relax. Like I build a computer not to have a camera pointed at it. It's so much easier. Uh, all right, front USB 3. Oh man, both of them are right there. Man, this case and motherboard are just like match made in heaven. Look at this. Everything goes right exactly where it needs to go. So easy. It really is easy to build your own PC these days. Like, all you gotta do is orient the thing and the thing. The hardest part that for whatever reason they still haven't solved is just the front panel connectors for the power switch, power LED, reset switch, and drive indicator LED. Like, that's it. You know what I wanna see? <coughs> Man, this would be great. So, at a very low cost, case manufacturers out there, I hope one of you is listening, because I think this is legitimately a good idea. For a very low cost, you could include multiple versions of these to make it way easier for newbies to plug these things in. So. By default, they come with each one individually and hopefully reasonably well labeled. This one is actually quite poorly labeled. See, Sonic, you could do a better job. There is a little arrow, like kind of embossed on the back of the plastic to indicate the positive terminal, but there's no actual like uh, screen printing or sticker or anything like that to indicate it on the text side. So you can see for power LED, it is indicated, but for these, it's not. And I know it doesn't matter but a lot of the time these do have a colored wire and it can be confusing for people. So it would be nice if, uh, actually, yeah, I guess it's not really a, like a positive version. It doesn't matter. The point is, it'd be nice if you indicated which way so that people who don't know it doesn't matter can just you know, go, oh, plug in with confidence, right? But I would love to see case manufacturers include a handful of adapters. I mean, the vast majority of the motherboards on the market are made by ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, and ASRock, right? There's only three manufacturers that the vast majority of, of custom computers are gonna use. So if you just include standard, like um, kind of like ASUS's Q connector thing, but less stupid, like with wires on it, because the Q connector hangs like this far out of the motherboard, so you can't even plug something into the bottom slot. Like it's so dumb, I hated that thing. It was so dumb, so dumb. Love you ASUS, but what the heck. Um, but so if you just had like an extender version that's just a block that plugs into each of those brand motherboards, that would take care of like 99% of these problems. So that's a Q connector right there behind you. Uh, that thing is horrible. So you can see it like plugs in in one block and everything's like nice and clearly labeled, which is great. So if you have kind of thick fingers or whatever, you can easily do it outside the case and then add it after. But it's, um, it has compatibility problems, so I don't, I don't like that solution. So yeah, that's what I wanna see. I wanna see a case manufacturer include a handful of little like uh, adapter leads so that people can do this with confidence. Why don't they just make a universal connector for like the whole thing? Ah, oh, what a wonderful question. So the reason that they don't make a universal connector is because all the motherboard manufacturers hate each other's guts. <laughs> okay. 
I'm serious. The only reason that they ever cooperate is because of um, pushes from companies like AMD or Intel to get them to adhere to standards. If it wasn't for that, they would all engineer completely different solutions to the same problem just to spite each other. I am certain of it. <laughs> I'm not even joking. This is not oh, funny, David. Oh, it's very funny. It's not funny. They all like absolutely, it's funny because the companies all hate each other, but all the employees at the companies, like, because they're all in Taiwan. Asus, Gigabyte, ASRock, MSI, okay? They're all Taiwanese companies. So like, it would, okay, I'm, I'm going to choose two at random so that I don't, you know, accidentally out someone who told me something they weren't supposed to tell me. But I have heard from people at some of those companies that they will have like an engineering sample of like some new, you know, crazy gaming laptop before like I even find out about it. They'll literally have it in their lab, like playing with it. And it's like, well, why? And part of the reason is that people move around between them. Acer too, Taiwanese as well. People move around between them so much that there are so many relationships between the people at these companies that everyone's buddies with everyone and everyone knows what everyone else is doing. So the companies themselves like hate each other's guts, but then the actual people have these like deep, rooted connections to each other. So it's like, uh, I, I don't know, my favorite way to describe the computer industry is inbred because it does a lot of stupid stuff because of all the inbred. <laughs> uh, all right, so here it is. Proof that RDNA 2 graphics cards for PC actually exist. Ha ha. Watch. JK, it's fake. <gasps> Magic. No? All right. I guess. Thanks, David. I, you know, I know you got my back. <laughs> that's, why I, that's why I put myself out there, because I know you got my back. All right, let's pull out these screws and get this graphics card installed. You got my back so much, I might just give your arms a break here. I'm so sorry. I always forget that poor you, you're holding the camera forever. I was holding camera for days. All right, there we go. How about we install the GPU like this? <laughs> David's like, well, I do have these rockin' biceps, but I don't have to use them all day. I'm constantly flexing. All right. So our GPU goes in, a little something, something like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Clean. How freaking clean is it? It's very clean. I don't even have to wait for the answer. I know the answer. It's called a rhetorical question. Oh, people want you to show the guns. Twitch chat wants to see your guns, David. That's on my OnlyFans. He says it's on his OnlyFans, guys. <laughs> you got to go check out his OnlyFans. Yep. All right. Graphics card's in. He actually asked me before we started the stream <laughs> when our OnlyFans is coming, and I'm kind of like... Tech porn, man. Gee, David, is that appropriate, is that appropriate workplace uh, conversation, hey, we David? We a group message about underwear modeling. We did. We did actually. We did. I uh, I put off the I put off the launch of the V2 underwear for one week, by the way, <laughs> because I'm not quite ready. I have not quite recovered from holiday body just yet. Also, actually, more than that, because I have recovered to a significant degree. I've been exercising every other day since the beginning of January, um, just like. Just because I got I to gotta do my underwear shoot, so I'm like, okay, I need to make sure that I've at least got like a little bit of, a little bit of you know, definition here, right? But the other problem is that I have to do something about the like, carpet that continues to spread across my lower abdomen. I don't like it. I don't like it. So I got I to gotta, I gotta do something. I, I, I just, I can't embrace that one. I can't embrace that one. I don't like it. Not like I like these cable ties from LTTstore.com. You guys know this product was almost one of our biggest disasters ever on LTTstore.com because the prohibitively high fulfillment costs on them made it so that the pricing was, let's just say, higher than we would have liked. Um, but like, it is what it is. We can only price things such that we're not losing money on them. But you know what? You guys because you're amazing and want to support us apparently, have bought so many of these cable tie packs that they're actually finally profitable. So 
<laughs> we don't, compared to what we bought in the first place, we don't have a ton of them left in stock, but the ones that are left, we are actually making money on now. So thank you very much, you guys. <laughs> Good job. We totally underestimated how popular the orange ones were going to be. This orange pack I have here might be like the last remaining one in existence. Almost all the ones in stock are white. We thought everyone was going to want white because everyone's into like them clean builds now, but not so much. How freaking clean is this? I love it. I just can't, I can't get over it. Look at that. That's it. That's like the whole computer. And we flip the other side around, check this out. Oh, oh no, no, you're good, David, you're good. You're good. That's the backside. Like, I haven't done any cable management yet. Nothing. Nothing. Isn't that crazy? I, I, I actually kind of love it. And it's not even ridiculously expensive. Hey, Colin, do you mind bringing up the pricing for the, uh, the Synchro power supply and case real quick? Yeah. So the case is 150 bucks uh, alone, 309 with fans and 650 watt power supply. It's like, fine. Like, so you're not paying a huge premium for like this kind of ease of building. And what's nice too is that they did maintain compatibility at least for the case with legacy power supplies. So it's not like you're locking in and you can never use anything but a synchro power supply ever again. You know what, I'm gonna use zip ties for these. Uh, do we have any zip ties handy? Uh, there should be a thing, but I didn't think you need any. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't, you know what? Nope, we're gonna save a, we're gonna save a plastic tree and we're gonna do, use one of my favorite little tricks. We're gonna reuse the twist ties that, uh, here, I'm gonna leave this here while I go get some snips. We're gonna reuse the twist ties that came as part of our packing materials. I, uh, I don't know, I just, it, it frustrates me when we unnecessarily just sort of mm, use plastic that we don't really need to use. Especially because this packing material stuff is already, dang it, <laughs> there it is. It's already here, so it's like already gonna end up in a landfill at some point. So if we can delay it a little bit, that seems like a nice thing to do for good old Mother Earth. Like even if you don't believe in climate change or you don't believe that, you know, whatever, can we all agree that having fewer landfills is probably good, you know? Mostly? Okay, cool. Seems like, it seems like an uncontroversial opinion, but then again, it feels like everything is a controversial opinion these days. <laughs> like you could say something like, you know, child pornography is bad, and it feels like someone would find a way to label you some, something bad because of it. Someone. All right, let's go ahead and Put that in there. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of cable management just so that we're maximizing the cleanness of our build here. You know, I might actually have to tip this up because these, <clears throat> oh, these cable ties are getting away from me because of gravity. Way to go, gravity, you loser. That's why nobody likes you. You're always killing people and- Keeping us down. Keeping us down, exactly. You know what, this one's not quite long enough. So that's what she said. All right. Oh, I guess I could check out chat for a little bit. Oh, wow, there's apparently a ton of spam in the YouTube chat because almost every single message is being held for review by the automatic <laughs> spam bot. Way to go, YouTube chat. Making Twitch chat look civil since 2000 whenever. <laughs> Classic YouTube chat. YouTube really is such a fascinating place to spend time on because it is quite literally the most mainstream thing that I do, like that I engage with. Like there's almost no other aspect of my life where I really am interacting with like Joe, Joe, off, Joe and Jane off the street. Um, you know, in my daily life, everyone's like sort of, I would say like a, a relatively homogenous mixture, you know, like it's all Canadians, obviously, for the most part. It's like, 
Twitch, <laughs> Twitch chat's ripping on YouTube chat. Twitch chat, okay, you are the pot and they are the kettle right now, okay? I, I hope you guys appreciate the irony of making fun of another platform's chat for being toxic and stupid because you guys, you'll always be the worst in my heart, you know? <laughs> you'll always be my worst. Oh, float plane chat's pretty civil. Here, I'll, I, will read, I will read the last five float plane messages in, it, with no filter, no filter. Float plane chat is best. We've got some Pepe uh, emotes. Uh, blow doesn't make it any better for the ozone layer, sadly. Landfills are way worse than burning it, someone says. And uh, oh my, I wish we could turn the frame rate down on the eyes emoji, that is way too intense. See, mostly pretty civil conversation. We, we do have some, we do have some Pepe, Pepe, Pepe in there. And Pepe is controversial. Certain cartoons are bad now. Um, so I'm like, okay, I can, I can abide those rules. But then apparently we do have, didn't like, didn't the animator, didn't the, the cartoonist for Pepe the Frog like claim him back or something like that? I thought, I, I can't keep track anymore. That's the thing. That's what happens when you turn boomer. You just, you can't keep track anymore and you stop just, you stop caring about the, the little like details of like which, which cartoon is like the, the mean cartoon now. And uh, oh, okay, okay. So everyone stopped caring about Pepe, so Twitch just kept using him. Is that kind of the story? Sure. Okay, yeah, sure, fine, sure. Probably because there's lots of boomers in the mainstream media and they stopped caring, just like me. I was like, okay, it's a cute frog. It's actually not cute. It's kind of ugly. I don't really. It's kind of sad. Is that the point? I think he's supposed to be sad and pathetic. Oh, I see. All right. Well, then, yeah. well, they did a good job then. They did a really good job. There's definitely some millennial self-loathing in Pepe. Millennial self-loathing. Do millennials self-loathe? 100%. Why? Because they're millennials. I thought we were proud to be millennials. I'm proud it's to be a millennial. It's not about being millennials. It's just about wanting death. I had avocado toast this weekend. Delicious. It, with cheese and tuna? Yeah. I melt it. What? You don't do tuna melts? No, not, with, uh, not with avocado. Oh, good. you should try it. So you got the tuna, you butter the other side, you get the cheese on there, you fry it up, then you got the melted cheese, you put your slices of avocado over top. Oh. The avocado, tomato, and uh, egg. Okay, I can get behind that too. I can get behind that too. You're millennial too, right? Yeah, you're like close to my age. Yeah, see, here we are. We're proud of our avocado toast. It's a nice treat. There's nothing wrong with avocado toast. And, and it's like as though boomers don't eat avocados. I'm pretty sure avocados were like a super fruit at one point or another. And super fruit is about as boomer a term as you can possibly have. Super fruit. <laughs> I mean, you remember that crap, oh, right? Yeah. From like the 90s, early so 2000s? Yeah, like yeah, super foods. Arugula. Super foods. Food of steel. Rescue the lowest lane food. Okay. Man, Superman is the least interesting hero ever. They Come they at me. Come at me, bro. I don't even care. And like, that's the worst thing about Captain Marvel. Like people are all go on and on and on about everything that's like wrong with Captain Marvel movies. <laughs> no, the thing that's wrong with Captain Marvel movies is that they have Superman in them. Superman is the worst. And yeah, okay, fine, it's a different name for Superman. We call it Captain Marvel. But like, it's the same basic concept. Everything loses its impact when there's no stakes. When it's like, when you have an invincible super being that can one hit anything. It's just dumb. And then, when you try to create drama by having the invincible super beings one hit not work, and then, you break it like immediately. Like when Captain Marvel shows up at the end of, uh, at the end of Infinity War, it's like, uh, or Endgame, sorry. When she shows up at the end of Endgame and it's like, so she can not one hit Thanos or something because of some rock he's holding, but then she can like just trash the entire space fleet and drop it all over the battlefield or whatever. It's like, so I don't get it. Like, is she mega, ultra-powerful, can do anything? Or is she vulnerable? 
in some ways or not. And then you, and then you create this like, it, it just becomes a conversation about like, okay, well, like what's canon and what's not. And maybe that's what comic book nerds like about it, where it's all just like so inconsistent that you can just have endless conversations about it forever. But I don't know. For me, for me, I like it when there's a clear set of rules that's being applied, and I don't feel any stakes if there isn't. That's my, there, that's my problem. Also, I figured out what I did wrong now. Um, that's for if you use a normal power. Oh, OK, so no, I don't need this. No. Oh, good. Well, that explains why I had extra screws, though, because uh, this was supposed to screw together. So this is a cable management doodad if you don't use a synchro thing. So could we get the, um, that's it. That was like, I was, I've been sitting here wasting time talking about Marvel movies and we still managed to build the computer. And it's so clean, like freaking clean. It's like, if you don't have patience for cable management, is that a solution and a half or what? Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's get this baby let's get this baby fired up. Maybe play some play some Vidya games. I'm gonna have to mask up so that I can have a helper come on in here. We gotta make sure we're following WorkSafe. Nexal says the Infinity Stones control the universe. Kind of makes sense they'd be more powerful. Sure, but there was never like a really clear. Um, <sighs> So they control the universe, they're all powerful, you can bend reality and bend time and whatever. You know, why did he ever even get hit by an ax, even not in the head, then? Like, like what do you, like, why? It's just stupid. She got her powers from one of the stones, so she's holding. Either way, so okay, fine then. So anything other than a power stone is automatically an uninteresting villain. It's like, I don't know. It's just boring because everyone knows what the like the formula is for a superhero movie, right? They start out sort of learning about themselves and we humanize them a little bit, or not just a movie, but just like for, for a character. You know, they start out vulnerable. They gain these superpowers. They they learn about themselves. You know, it's like a voyage of self-discovery. Uh, they come up against a, a, a foe. They come to terms with the fact that they have to fight the foe. Um, they they struggle. Okay, so they they have to struggle at some point, and then they they overcome all odds to prevail. That's that's your super that's your superhero story. And I just I don't find it I don't find it believable when you've got like a, just an infinitely powerful being. It's boring. I think that's why people like Batman and Iron Man so much. Because they're just people. The problem I have with that though, is that you watch like Bruce Wayne or Tony Stark get clobbered by, you know, uh, what, what, would be, what would be sort of like equivalent baddies. I mean, Tony's been hit by Captain America and uh, Hulk at some point or another, if I recall correctly. And then, uh, gone toe -to -toe with Superman multiple times. yeah, Batman's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman. Not to mention just like his own, like Killer Croc, like his own, like just like, massively power. Like if you got hit, I don't care what kind of armor you're wearing. If you got hit by that one time, you're like dead. And so there always has to be this the sequence where they're like getting beat up and they can like barely get up again. And I I I only find that believable if you create canon explanations for it. Like a perfect example of that is Wolverine. That's why Wolverine is such a great superhero because there's an explanation for why he can be down for the count and get up again because he's got his like super healing powers or whatever. Um, so what's the best superhero movie then? What's the best superhero movie? Oh man. Is it Logan? It's a good superhero movie. Logan's a great movie. Uh, Man, it's tough because for me, there's a lot of different reasons to watch a superhero movie. To be clear, I'm not saying I don't love the Marvel movies. I do. Um, they're great. They give me they give me much mindless pleasure. Um, but if I was gonna watch a super movie, super movie. If I was gonna watch a superhero movie, 
that I actually wanted to like think about. You know what? I think it's got to be Dark Knight. I, it's, it's totally stereotypical. Like it's a safe answer, but it's just the only real answer, isn't it? Spider-Man Two. It's pizza time. Um, I don't know if I ever even saw Spider-Man Two, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not. I'm actually not sure. Which one is Spider-Man Two? Is that a Tobey Maguire one? Yeah, with Doc Ock. Oh yeah, I did see that one. That awesome. Yeah, it was good. Sorry, sorry, my bad. It's not the Dark Knight. No, it's not. It's not Dark Knight. Dark Knight is just. It's absolutely on a on a different level than pretty much anything else. You know what held up surprisingly well for me though, is um, 1989 Batman. Yeah. It's. It's got a flavor. I, I watched Dark Knight and I was like, man, the way he portrayed, you know, Joker, it was like, and the whole story where Heath Ledger ultimately um, killed himself and all that kind of stuff. I was like, man, like what, what is it, what is going on with this role? Because I was reading an interview where like Jack Nicholson apparently made some offhand comment like told him so or something like that, like told him this role is like crazy and affects you. And I was like, yeah, but did Jack Nicholson even go like that, that ham crazy in his portrayal? So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to rewatch. I'm going to rewatch Batman 1989. And yeah, Nicholson's Joker is a crazy mf -er. Um And it's, it's dark and it's kind of, it's gritty and like, it, I don't know, it, it was good. And you got to especially consider that that wasn't already a thing, right? So if you watch it with that, uh, with that context that, you know, you couldn't just follow the trend that Batman 1989 set. Oh, hold on a second. There's a peel on the other side of this. All right, let's do some peels. Sorry, I've gotten a little bit off topic here, haven't I? Uh, why don't we get back to the PC? <laughs> and to, guys, just to be clear, I'm not saying that my opinions about any of this stuff is the be all and end all. I don't study these movies. I don't read the comic books. So. Take it for what it is. I am a movie watcher only, and most of them I have only seen once. So that's it. I just, I have, how do I put this nicely? I have a lot of stuff to do. So like re-watching movies and like analyzing them is um, not one of the things that I tend to occupy a lot of my time with. But I do enjoy them. And with anything that I enjoy, I do tend to want it to be its best self. I tend to be kind of a critical person, but that's part of why I do this job. Because I love technology, which means I just want it to be its best, its best self, which means that I kind of have to criticize it a little bit. <laughs> that's all. Oh, thinking of criticizing, I'm gonna criticize this. We can't do the cleanest, cleanest PC setup and have cable management like that. Oh, sorry, David. Uh, all right, uh, do we have a power cable for the, oh, wow, you plugged it in for me. Aw, everything's all plugged in. Just gotta get a network cable. Uh, I don't have a network cable. Ah, I do have a network cable. Ha ha. Oh, nope. That one's longer. Uh, you know what, we're good. We're good, we're good, we're good. I'm just gonna do this. Yeah. Um, do 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 do. There we go. No, no, I won't. <laughs> the true solution. <laughs> Walk all the way around my foot. Okay. I hope this thing just fires right up for me here. That's always the concern when we do builds live. Did Linus break anything? Uh, you know what? Let's yeah, just do that. Better. Yeah. Yep. Back fan. Oh. Oh, wow, really? I have never seen that before. So I kind of jammed the cable in. Yeah, 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 I'm working on it, OK? I kind of jammed the cable kind of behind the fan, and it went all the way back behind a little gap there and got stuck in the blades. OK, the rest of them are working, though. Sweet. Hey, look at that. Booted up first try, 64 gigs RAM. Oh, are those 32 gig sticks? I didn't even know. All right, cool. Ryzen 5900X, every day. everything's looking good. CPU fan error. Oh, that's interesting. Um, did I miss the header? Oh, okay, I misread the label. I plugged it into the CPU opt header. 
it doesn't really matter. You can just disable that warning in the BIOS, but it's um, my OCD doesn't like it when I plug the CPU fan into the wrong header, so I need to fix that now. It just bothers me. To be clear, I'm not actually diagnosed with OCD. I just have a strong discomfort when things aren't just so. So that's the best way that I can describe that in a way that is quick for other people to understand. <laughs> All right, how you guys doing? Oh man. Okay, float plane chat is like basically going off about uh, Linus X Men simp confirmed, <laughs> going off about like superhero movies and stuff. Not, not even, not even. Although, as an adult, I did go back and rewatch the entire um, like 90s cartoon series. It's good. Yeah, it good. It's like actually good. Not as good as um, uh, Batman the Animated Series, though. It's so good. And can we just appreciate Mark Hamill for a moment? I know, I know, the internet already spends a lot of time appreciating Mark Hamill, but we cannot spend enough time appreciating Mark Hamill. We're not gonna have him forever, guys. So we should just appreciate Mark Hamill as much as we can before we don't have Mark Hamill anymore. He is so awesome. His Joker is just outstanding. Might be the most Oh, it's so hard to say. Every generation has their own most iconic, he's because the most intergenerational. oh, he's definitely the most intergenerational. Have you have you ever seen the like fan talk that he's giving, where someone asks him to do the the why so serious Heath Ledger line, and it was like something he had kind of like avoided just to kind of be his own Joker. And uh, anyway, he does it though, and it's like spine chills. <laughs> it's 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 so good. It's. So good. All right, I think uh, CSM is the issue with why my boot drive's not showing up here. Um, Worst case on Terry, I'll put in that other slide. You bet. Mark Hamill gets so appreciated. <laughs> Basically ruined the Joker for everyone else. You're either Mark Hamill or you're Jared Leto's crappy Joker. <laughs> I actually haven't watched. Uh, I haven't watched any of the. Uh, I haven't watched Suicide Squad or. Um, Justice or Justice League, unfortunately. Snyder cuts coming out, bro. Uh, okay. Four hours of pure garbage. You know what? I actually did not make it through. Um, the the newer Joker movie, 2019. Really? Jo I, was, I thought it was fine. I, it I, it might have been. I just I only made it. Oh. No, no, it's fine. It's here. There we go. I made it like 20 minutes in, and I was like, this is just 25, 25, half an hour? Something, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, you know, this did not, this did not grab me. That's fair. I, I don't know. It's the, the Viking Phoenix like, vehicle, that's what it is. Yeah, I, I get that. It was just like, it felt very, uh, you know, gritty realism. But yeah. not like, like, like the like the kind of gothic grittiness of you know 1989 Batman like it was just almost like kind of too well, driver, too right? real. With Supergirl on it. Um, for some reason this is oh float planes like you have to rewatch it I'm like oh man yeah I can you know what this is fair this is fair peace Thomas peace 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 play so Thomas on Twitch is like Joker was a thinker's movie I was not in the mood to think when I was watching it. So that's fair. Like I, I was like, I'm gonna sit down and uh, turn off my brain for a little bit here, and that that didn't fly. So that's fair. Okay, let's try reify. Okay, well I didn't make it. I didn't make it through it, so I can't really I can't really comment on that. Um, got people saying like apparently it was just slow. Get really good. I mean, okay, so maybe part of my problem was I had already watched the Carpool Critics podcast of it. Uh. So there was no real surprises left for me. It was just like, okay, spoiler alert, I guess. He like massacres a bunch of people or something. Actually, it's been a long time. I don't even remember. It, it just, I don't know. He incites, he incites riots. Okay, sure. So I was like, oh, okay. So that's what's coming. I'm, okay, neat. Uh, why is this not booting? The... Uh, maybe I borked and uh, selected the wrong directory when I installed Windows. Oh, okay. Hey, here we go. Let's try another one. Oh, you were getting it. Oh, that's cool. 
Yeah, yeah, that's okay. fine. Here, let me let me try another M.2. Worst case scenario, I lent Alex my M.2 test drive for the uh, desk PC, so we can grab it. This is what I love about M.2, man, is as long as the slot is in a spot that's easily accessible, you can swap a drive. Oh, really? Oh, because the games are on here. Oh, okay, well, so much for that. Okay, this is what I don't like about M.2. When the slot is under something, you have to remove other components from your system in order to get at it. And graphics cards are such a pain in the butt to get at. This is one of the reasons I'm not the biggest fan of the NHD 15, unless you absolutely need, like, you know, AIO water cooling level performance, because it's a bit of a pain in the butt to get your top PCI Express card out when you use it. I'm gonna get something in there, Ugh, pop the tab. Honestly, I wish motherboard manufacturers would just uh, come up with some kind of locking mechanism for this that is like optional, so you can insert the card and not lock it. In fact, they do have them, there's a sliding one. I'd love to see the slide come back. It's really easy to break though, and it's harder to trigger. Like I remember when Asus added these wider ones with kind of the wings on them, that really did improve it a lot compared to the older ones. But it feels like there's got to be a solution where I can say, look, I don't want to lock it. I just want to, I just want to screw it in. That's it. All right, let's pop this puppy off. All right, so much for our Gen 4 charade. <laughs> Let's pop this in here. We've dropped all pretense at this point. I'm not even gonna put the cooling back on them because the truth is it doesn't matter. Unless you are like constantly writing to these things at their maximum speed off of like, like if you were using them to, uh, to ingest 12K footage or something like that, like all day, every day, yeah, you might want to make sure it's got the cooling on it, but otherwise they're not going to thermal throttle. So yes, our video showing water cooling in M.2 was just us being silly. Uh, all right, so there's that. Let's fire this back up again. Oh, that's fine, because I have a super fast way to get over there. Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! I'm tricksy like that. Okay, I'll go around. <laughs> okay, okay, can he do it? Are you allowed to touch it in limbo? Like touch the bar? Okay, man, that's, oh, that's really low. That's like, that's like junk level. Okay, so just gotta, uh, okay, I gotta get wide enough. If you, what, why? You could do this? Shut, easy? With the, shut up, you're just bothering me now. Okay. Ugh. Okay. Oh God. What? I don't know how to limbo. Do I look like a limbo expert? Ow. <laughs> All right, fine. We're going for the action roll then. <laughs> Ow. I was very stuck. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. <laughs> I've learned nothing. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta check the. Uh... Wow, the Ethernet cable held, so that's good. Okay, that's the. That's the one time, the one time having a, uh, a screwdriver in my pocket was not a net positive. <laughs> oh, lordy. Okay. <laughs> okay, that, uh, wow. Let's go ahead, <laughs> why don't we run uh, something? <laughs> Okay. 
HTCP. Uh, nothing, I can, nothing we can do about that like immediately. Like we could get, grab an HTCP stripper, like we do have one, but it's like, it's not something we're gonna solve right now. Okay. Oh man. I, I'm sorry, I just, I, I can't right now. Oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. Uh, you know what, let's not do, let's, let's go with something that I know is likely to work and that has a built-in FPS counter and stuff. That was, that was not, okay. So guys, let's just take a moment here and I'd like to explain my intent. I can roll reasonably gracefully. I was intentionally doing like a, like a, shut up David, you know I can. I know you can. I was intentionally doing like a, a, a toddler style somersault. It was supposed to be a little awkward. It wasn't supposed to be that awkward. I was really stuck. Like, how could you roll back? Did you, yeah, I couldn't roll back because I was like completely, I was completely past the point of no return. I was past the tipping point. And then so much of my weight was resting with the cable stuck on the screwdriver that I couldn't pull the screwdriver. See this? So you can see here, I couldn't pull it because it was over the top of it and the cable was here like locking it into place. <laughs> Thank you for rescuing me. <laughs> oh man, oh, I'm good, I'm fine. <sighs> Let's just see if this game works. Lordy, there's like thousands and thousands of people watching. They're like, Linus is trying to justify his poor rolling skills. That's not even true. Okay, I can roll. Here, look, I will, one second. Okay, okay, I will, I will roll for you, okay? I can, I can roll properly, okay? There, that's a proper roll. I know how to roll. That was just not how to do it before. Jeez. Is my, is this mouse not working? Wait, did this just shut down? Okay, I'm just gonna step over it this time. <laughs> I can't believe that this cable and these ethernet jacks survived that. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, this mouse is definitely plugged in. All right, All right. okay, cool. real careful. I don't need a repeat of that. What just happened? Did this reboot while I was talking to you guys? What's going on? Do a barrel roll. Okay, we're not, we're not even doing that. We're not even doing that. Yes, I know that's actually smooth. People are like, oh, that one was actually smooth. Yes, I know, I know how to roll. It's doing it bad on purpose. <laughs> Rick rolling. Uh, no, the case is not upside down. This is an inverted ATX layout. So the, the GPU is on top in this particular style. Did this thing just restart? Oh. Oh, never, <laughs> oh. you know what? Way to not be positive, David. I thought I could count on you. Earlier in this very stream, I was like, David, I can always count on you. And you were like, yeah. And then you let me down. You did not count on me at all. Oh my God. Snake Doctor just asked Pink LTT Beanie when? How do you know? He's, a, did you show Chase? He showed up in the thing. I didn't know that wasn't not a thing, sorry. <laughs> Chase, you're not allowed to wear unreleased merch anymore. Please. Actually, it's okay, it's okay. No, no, it's okay, stick with it, because that hair is terrible. You gotta put that away, bro. Um, oh, that's hilarious, okay. Yeah, uh, pink beanie leaked. You, we might as well just tell people it's coming. Go, go check it out. So it's got the, uh, got the green tag, Lambo style. This is gonna be the Lambo edition LTT toque. Um, all right, don't let them keep looking at it. That's enough, that's enough, that's enough leaks for today. Uh, we're launching it on Friday. It's gonna be a special edition. Uh, probably gonna launch it during WAN show, so don't miss that. I believe we are only selling 69 units of it. Wow. That's it. That's it. We're going, well, okay, look. How many thousands of that would you have ordered, David? 6,900. No, there's no way. 69,420. There's no way we could move 69,420 pink, pink tukes. 
Okay, I did underestimate how many mouse pads we were going to sell. I am aware of that oversight that has cost the company a lot of money. <laughs> I'm, I'm aware of it. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, we, we decided, you know what? We want to do it, but like just for fun. It's not like a money-making endeavor at that point. It's a handful of units, uh, but it's just like something for people who are like, really into the Lambo memes to appreciate and everyone else to totally not get at all. So it should be good. I'm excited. People like pre-orders? I'm like, no, no, we're not going to do pre-orders. It's not enough. You can't do pre-orders on something like that because it's effectively the same thing as just launching it. Like, it's going to sell out in two seconds regardless of, of what you do. But that's okay. We'll still have all the other colors. We actually have some other like upcoming colors that we'll probably do as well. There's nothing like coming right away like the pink one though. All right. So what are we what are we running at on this thing? Video. Oh oh my god. Am I? It doesn't feel like I'm running at 640 by 480. All right. We're going to 4K, and we're going to overall quality ultra nightmare. Performance metrics. Let's go medium. This thing even at medium, there's a lot of performance metrics in this game. Early float plane link. No, we are not planning to do an early float plane link, I don't think, because you guys would buy all of them. The float plane peeps are like crazy when it comes to the merch. They're like, I'm like, how many do you want? They're like, yes. <laughs> like, it's, it's, un, it's out of control. We have to save them from themselves. That's why we only have like a limited amount of merch, guys. Oh, whoopsie daisies. So yeah, if anyone was wondering, this machine, what was our, hey, what was our total price on this one, Colin? It was uh, $3,100. Oh, but is that because of street prices? That's uh, normal prices. Really? That's normal prices? Oh, right. I guess 6800 XT is a pretty, pretty pricey graphics card. Wait, 3000 Really? Yeah, 650 for the card. $650 for the card, and then we've got another 750 for the CPU. Oh, 64 gigs of RAM. Okay, so you could save some money dropping down to 16 gigs of RAM. You could save some money. We've got two M.2 drives in here. You don't necessarily need to go that crazy when it comes to your storage. You could save on the cooler. Uh, you could save on the cooler. That's a $100 cooler. You could easily use AMD's included cooler. Uh, does the 5900X include one, though? I actually don't think so. Yeah, I think the Ryzen 9s do not. And then everything 7 and below does, if I recall correctly. Now that kind of makes sense. Like by the time you're spending six hundred and fifty dollars on a CPU, I don't think it's a big stretch to spend a little bit more on a on a proper cooler for it. You know, AMD's also got to make money to keep you know bringing us CPUs that are actually faster than the last generation. You know what I'm saying? Although, I mean, the big news yesterday: CS is going on. There's like all kinds of products. It's like what is it? TCL, I think, is showing like their rollable thing, and like LG's got OLED Gen 2, and Samsung's showing micro LED. Meanwhile, the big news for me: Intel has an engineer at the helm again. Oh, and that's the kind of thing that's not going to pay off for a while. But man, there's a pattern, right? Like, who's killing it in the semiconductor space right now? You got your AMD, you got your NVIDIA. What do they have in common? Engineer at the head of the company. Intel has had a bean counter. No offense, I mean, I've never met the guy. I'm sure he's a perfectly nice guy. But Intel has had an accountant in charge of the company for far too long. And it's been very clear from the decisions that they're making that they are accounting-oriented decisions, not technology passion decisions. And so I'm really excited, and I hope, I'm hopeful, that we're going to see a big turnaround from them, having someone who actually just, like, wants to build cool technology in charge. I'm hopeful. Nothing's a guarantee, though. I mean, if there's anything that AMD has also proved to us, proven to us? Yeah, proven. Uh, it's that it's, <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. Uh, we had a video recently where one of the headlines that we flashed on the screen as part of like the uh, uh, just, well, okay, I don't know what other people call it. We call it L-roll because it's not B-roll because it's not like video footage. Um, so we call it, it used to be Linus and Luke roll. So just anything that's not a shot. Um, so we had uh, like an old article that was like, AMD to be out of business by 2020. Like meanwhile, it's, it's, 20, it's 2020 or it was 2020 when we did it. And they were definitely not out of business, which is which is pretty sweet. We all thought it. We all thought it was done. 
We thought it was a done deal, man. Oh, hi there. How you doing, brain spider? Should I play a different game or should I just play this game? Because I like this play game. A different game. Play, play a different game. game? Fine. Whatever. We're getting like 170 FPS. It's freaking awesome. 4K? At 4K Ultra Nightmare. Damn. Dang. Okay, so now let's now, now we'll fire up Cyberpunk 2077 and bring this poor thing to its knees. <laughs> its knees. Oh, you know what? Float Plane just reminded me. We haven't done an exclusive for them in a while, like an uh, exclusive video. Maybe we could give you guys uh, a little tour of what's been going on behind the scenes. Check out the graffiti in there. So there's the new... Uh, here, I can here I can help you, David. Are you good? I can kind of... Yeah. So we've done like a complete remodeling of a lot of our office spaces here, including the editing den. We tore down the, the hex wall that was between the old... Bench, then camera. Now we'll be editing space over there. Um, we put a bunch of like sort of more uh, cubicle-y type things in the writer's area. The, we built that area over there. We're finally putting the lounge back. That construction is due to be completed tomorrow. Ooh. So all that, yeah, did you know that? No. All that's left is final inspections. Wow. And then the writers are coming in this weekend to do some organization to help logistics get caught up. And then the process of moving everybody from um, the business team over, everyone from Creator Warehouse over, putting the lounge back in place and getting everyone back where they're supposed to be is going to start. I'm so excited. It's been a year. It's been a year because of COVID delays and, well, mostly because of COVID throwing a wrench into absolutely everything last year. People are asking, is it a socially distant lounge? It'll just not be able to accommodate as many people at first, but with vaccines being consistently delivered into Canada, we're hoping by the middle of this year that uh, we will be able to enjoy it like look properly. Um, can we... Can we fast forward this? Do you know how to skip cutscenes in this game? I thought it was space. Uh, this might be too important. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's annoying. Maybe not. Can you have the, do you have it to work now? Yeah. Death first. Oh, nice. Yeah, sure. Before we begin our journey, I must verify the identities of all customers. How long are you going to make Please me proceed sit here? to connect your personal links. Please proceed to connect your personal links. I got a F to jack in. Thank you. Excelsior package Got activated. Him. Excelsior? Oh, this just keeps getting oh, better. Yeah. Oh, oh, apparently it's really loud, Chase. It's loud. Game's loud. Gotta fix the game. Hey, thanks, Twitch. We got you covered. Thanks, Flowplane. Got you guys. Got you guys. Uh, oh, man. Wait, so we're just gonna drive around in this car? You're about to do a main mission. Are we? You can probably exit it. Who left our Who left our benchmark account sitting here right about to start a main storyline mission? Come on, guys. Oh, and apparently this is like 30 minutes into the game and people are concerned about spoilers. I, oh, come on. A game that long? Are you? The beginning of this mission doesn't have spoilers. Come on. The end of the mission has spoilers. Oh, the end of the mission does. That's fine. The odds of me completing this mission are extremely slim right now. Oh, I, for anyone who doesn't know this yet, um, we have some big personnel news. Uh, Madison from 2019's ROG Rig Reboot is going to be joining our team effective, I think she starts in like three weeks, three or four weeks or something like that. So you guys, uh, you guys can get excited if you're excited about that sort of thing. I've seen a handful of people being like, oh, not that annoying kid. Trust me, I'm with you, 100%. But she was the best applicant we got for the social media coordinator <laughs> position. I've also seen some people that are upset that a company like us needs a social media coordinator. To be clear, it's not like I'm going to stop contributing to our social media and I'm just going to like hand it off to some edge lord kid to you know go all Wendy's on you or anything like that. That's not that's not what's happening. We just we need someone to do like the 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 dirty work, right? So when we come up with a cool idea. It's like somebody's got to go, you know, if the idea is, okay, Linus needs to wear a silly hat, like someone has to go get the hat. 
So you know, Madison will do stuff like that. Um, Madison will do stuff like uh, making sure that everything gets posted to multiple platforms. So if you follow on Facebook, for example, I have mental, mental, I have metal splinters in my finger. What? Um, yeah, they hurt. Uh, I'm just, I was hoping to pick them out. Um, so yeah, you might have noticed if you you know mostly keep track of us on Facebook, sometimes there's stuff that's not posted to Facebook, but that is posted to Twitter and stuff like that. So she'll make sure that everything actually gets posted all the places it's supposed to go, because sometimes I'm busy and I forget. So it's kind of little stuff like that. Oh my god, we're going to sit in this car forever, aren't we? Hello? You can go see Hideo Kojima. I can? Yeah. He's in this, this hotel. Oh, that sounds good. With all the streamers and stuff in this game, I'm disappointed they didn't ask me. I guess I'm not really a streamer. I am video game space enough. I met Ammunition, and she told me that I taught her how to build a PC. That makes me video game space by one degree of separation, which is basically the same thing. Yeah, and Shroud like streams watching my videos. So even though I didn't like stream it and it's not a game, Shroud is a gamer and he streamed himself watching it. Which makes me by is that like one and a half degrees of separation? Yeah. yeah. Two strips of bacon. I'm basically a gamer at that point. <laughs> and and I one v one Shroud and Corey from whatever team he plays for now. So I did. Yeah. I, I didn't win, but like you know, I'm basically a pro gamer at that point. What? <laughs> well, except, you didn't. except I didn't win. Well, you don't have to win to be a pro, okay? The Vancouver Canucks have never won a Stanley Cup. They win games. They they win games. Yes, that's true. Okay, let's change some let's change some settings here. We finally got out of the stupid thing. First of all, why is windowed borderless the default for so many games? I hate it so much. And second of all, um, yeah, why, yeah, why is this? I don't know, 90. I'm down with the 90. Motion blur, gross. Man, what are these, what are these settings? This texture filter. Hmm? No, no, I know oh. what, I know what the setting is. <laughs> I just mean, what is with these defaults? Or like, whoever was dinking around with this before. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's go, let's go high. Think we can get away with high? I think you do higher than high. Uh, yeah, where, oh yeah, ray tracing. Well, you know, well, let's try it, let's try it. I guess, yeah, 4K, not deal with this. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that's a little bit mushy. It's like 40 FPS, maybe. Yeah, that's tough, hey? DLSS is one of those features AMD just does not have an answer for at all. And it really is a game-changing experience. On the CPU side, though, there is basically no downside whatsoever to going Ryzen 5 to going Ryzen 5000, assuming you can get one. All right. Speaking of getting one, I'm going to uh, get one a little bit of time set aside to uh, go through some of the super chats people sent, and then we're going to close it out. So let's see, man. Some of these are going to be from like two hours ago. Where's the colorful jacket today, Linus? Nick only allowed me to wear it on camera one time. He said you can wear it once, and then you have to stop wearing prototype merch on camera because it causes all kinds of problems for customer service. OK, then. So I wore it one time, and that's all I get to do until it's time for it to launch. Nick is like, I was like, you're not the boss of me. And he's like, well, you told me to keep your, uh, you know, your unhealthy impulses in check. And I was like, I did say that. So uh, Evan says, hi, I've been trying to get answers to this question. I have a Microsoft Surface Laptop Go, 256 gig, 8 gigs RAM. Will I be able to run Skyrim? Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that there's like level of detail mods that you could like apply to the game to make it like sort of run. Uh, I wouldn't say that that's going to be like an A plus gaming experience. Thanks, Paul's Gaming Hub. Thanks, Tyson Mead. Sup, Arizona. Um, yeah, he's a hi from Arizona. I didn't know that like you know the state could say hi, but you can. Uh, Jamie says most places that sold digital copies of extended edition Lord of the Rings upgraded users' copies to 4K for free. I was amazed by that. No, well, yeah, that's cool. Uh, is the R7 3700 still worth it in 2021? Yeah, sure. Why not? R7 3700 is pretty freaking sick CPU. 
Thanks, Mr. Idnet Guy. Mr. Idnet Guy. Back at it. Keep up the great content. Sure. All right. Um, I think that's pretty much that's pretty much it. There's a bunch of stuff about like Marvel in here and stuff like that. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get back to that. Uh, Hamer reviews says have a super chat for the entertainment value of that failed roll. Rip that <laughs> land cable. Thank you, thank you for that. At least I have this nineteen dollars to remember my dignity by. Um, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you enjoyed this build. The main point, the main takeaway is look at that. Is that freaking clean or what? And it barely took any time at all if I wasn't busy chatting you guys up about Marvel. Thanks for watching.